Well, if you took a look outside your window tonight, you probably saw something like this. A beautiful sunset shot earlier this evening shared with us by a viewer in Smelterville. Hi everyone. Thanks so much for staying up late with us. I'm Tim Pham. After a somewhat rainy Saturday, it seems like we are going to luck out with some sun and nice temperatures just in time for Easter. Meteorologist Michelle Boss is in the Weather Center. Michelle, looks like the kiddos will have great weather to hunt for those eggs. Yeah, the weather's definitely trending in the right direction. We did have a little bit soggier weather than expected earlier this morning, but just in time, things are clearing out on our satellite and radar loop. You can see the precipitation has gone away. The clouds are even clearing out from west to east, mostly clear skies across much of the inland northwest, and temperatures are going to be headed in the right direction as well. But first, a quick check on wind speeds because we did have some rather breezy conditions around Omac and Moses Lake earlier today with winds over 20 miles an hour. Those have come down at 12 miles per hour and they will continue to come down. Wind should not be an issue tomorrow and in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. We're already enjoying calm to light winds. Temperatures not too bad out there in the 40s and 50s mainly right now, but with clear skies, we'll see overnight lows drop into the upper 30s and lower 40s. So taking a look at the next 12 hours, clear skies as temperatures fall to around 41 degrees, 42 degrees between 5 and 7 a.m. So if you have a early Easter service, eh, a little bit on the cool side, but not too bad. There will be plenty of sunshine tomorrow morning. So for tonight, mostly clear skies, an overnight low around 40 degrees, and then tomorrow lots of sunshine, light westerly winds and high temperatures in the middle 60s. Michelle, thanks so much. This weekend has been filled with remembrances for the Columbine shooting in Colorado. Kevin Vaughn from our sister station in Denver covered the shooting, the investigation and the community's recovery in the years since. Kevin took a moment today to reflect. <laughs> driving there and I was listening to the radio and the initial reports that there had been multiple people shot, that there were pipe bombs going off, and it was just, it was bewildering to be honest with you. And I kept thinking that um, this was some kind of a strange prank or a hoax or something like that. But as I got closer and the reports got more ominous, um, it, it began to sink in that this was real and there were parents who literally just abandoned their cars on the road because uh, they, they couldn't move, it was gridlock, and they were just jumping out of their cars and running uh, toward the school. I'll never forget the image of that. The day Columbine happened, I'd been a reporter for about 12 years. My kids were pretty young. Um, my youngest son wasn't even in kindergarten yet. As a parent, I don't think any of us can imagine anything worse than losing a child. And that's what I always think about when I think about Columbine. I think about those parents who lost a child that day. It is hard to talk about. I was, uh, I was um, thinking about the children who died last night um, at a public event that I was at and I got a little bit emotional thinking about it and um, I, I don't see how you can't. I mean it's it's just so awful. The newspaper that I was working at brought in counselors and made them available to us for a long time after Columbine, and I took advantage of that. I think about a woman named Betty Scholes who came out of the school the night of Columbine, late at night, and patiently talked to me and a couple other reporters who were there, and was so kind as she told us about her nephew Isaiah, who had been killed that day. And I think about so many other parents who allowed me to spend so much time in their lives and in their homes. That's what I think about. I think about those people and, and what a debt of gratitude I owe to them for trusting me to tell their stories. Well, a recent study suggests trees can lower a city's temperature by up to 10 degrees. And with the hot summers we have here in the inland northwest, 10 degrees could really make a big difference. Krem 2 Shana Waltower tells us how the city hopes to turn this goal into a reality. Yeah, we know trees add a lot more than just beauty to our community. They also help create a healthy environment, which then only helps our city. 
We're seeing some mild temperatures now, but summer is just around the corner. With Earth Day and Arbor Day coming up, there's a special awareness around trees and their many benefits. A March study from the PNAS Scientific Journal says the right amount of tree cover can lower daytime temperatures by as much as 10 degrees. They actually reduce energy costs because you're not using your air conditioner as much. Katie Kosanke with Spokane's Urban Forestry Department says these reasons alone should encourage people to get out and plant. All the gray infrastructure in our city can really absorb and radiate heat. So having some green infrastructure too can really help to cool it. And you can you can feel the difference under one tree. You can feel it, you know, between different neighborhoods in town. And so, you know, we're really working to achieve higher canopy so everyone can, you know, have those the benefits. The goal is having 30% of the city sheltered with branches and leaves by 2030. Right now we're at about 20 3% and with the young trees growing out there and you know continually planting more trees and finding ways to um, preserve more trees, plant more trees, we're working on that to achieve that canopy cover. So we have an increase of canopy cover and then an increase in benefits. She says the city is also constantly working with construction companies to make sure business areas have enough trees in them. Whenever you know a new commercial um, building goes up, they have a, a landscaping requirements, and that includes street trees. So whether it's businesses or you and your family, there's something we all can do to contribute to a greener Spokane. Kosanke says one of her biggest tips for springtime is to make sure your trees are getting enough water because the hot summer months are not long away. In Spokane, Shana Walltower, Krem 2 News. Thanks so much, Shayna. Well, details about a memorial service for a Cowlitz County deputy who was shot and killed in the line of duty earlier this month have been announced. Deputy Justin DeRosier, a graduate of Washington State University, was shot on April 13th when he was sent to a traffic complaint in Kalama. He died the next morning shortly after being lifelighted to a hospital in Vancouver. The memorial will take place this Wednesday at 1 p.m., but doors will open at 11 in the morning. It will be in the Earl A. and Virginia H. Childs Center at the University of Portland. The memorial is open to the public, but parking is extremely limited. There are locations to watch the service online, but uh, you can find those addresses and how to donate to the DeRosiers Memorial Fund at creme.com. Washington State Patrol is on the lookout for DUI drivers tonight as marijuana enthusiasts celebrate what's known as 420. WSP says the last time 420 fell on a Saturday, law enforcement all across the country saw an increase in crashes similar to the level seen following major events like the Super Bowl. Troopers say for those legally participating today, you should have a plan in place, find a designated driver or take advantage of rideshare services. If you're a DUI and you cause a collision with serious injuries or death, you can be charged with a felony in the state of Washington. Well, in news out of Olympia, Governor Jay Inslee signed a new law updating car seat regulations in Washington. The changes could keep some kids in booster seats until they are almost in middle school. Any child over the age of four but shorter than four foot nine who outgrows a harness car seat will be required to use a booster seat. The changes mean most kids will need a booster seat until they are 10 or 12 years old. The new law will take effect in January of 2020. Six days after a fire devastated the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, investigators are still trying to narrow down the cause. Still ahead, 